Hey everyone, so let's talk about Israel and Gaza. The war is about a week old now, sort of like the lettuce at the back of my fridge, and the news media has been talking a lot about how Gaza will soon be without medicine and fuel and food. Sounds to me like he shouldn't have squandered all of his football earnings. Now, of course not, this is the Gaza Strip, which now looks worse than an English town centre on a Friday night when the pubs kick out. The actual reasons behind the conflict are often portrayed as highly complex and difficult to understand, but they're really not. This is less like Ocean's Eleven and more like Jaws Eleven. I also take issue with people pushing a moral equivalence that both sides are as equally bad and just as much to blame for the current situation. The Palestinians have lived there a long time, sure, but the Jews have also lived in the area since the days of Ramses II, so it's just as much their land too. But more importantly, if you look at the outcomes each side is actually after, they really couldn't be more different. If Hamas stopped fighting, there'd be peace tomorrow, whereas if the Israelis disarmed, then within a week there'd be a genocide that made Rwanda look like Disneyland. Saying both sides are the same conjures up memories of when President Trump said that there were, quote, very fine people on both sides of that race riot. Although to his credit, the Middle East was a much safer place on his watch. Saudi Arabia even went so far as to recognise Israel as a sovereign state for the first time in 70 years. Except here we are now, thousands dead, and apparently nobody in the region has any internet. So presumably Virgin Media got the contract to install it then. A nice little win for British business there, hashtag despite Brexit. The main thing I always think is very important to do is to differentiate between the Palestinians and the mass, which does seek a one-state solution, albeit it's one where they are the one state, and Israel's been wiped off the face of the earth in a show of fire and brimstone. As such, it's interesting to note that for many years Jerusalem actually bolstered Hamas and fed its support in order to purposely prevent a peaceful resolution or a two-state approach from happening. On the other side of the coin, though, it's not like the Arabs are living it up. No Christmas, no television, no football, no beer, no hot dogs, no bacon sarnies, no women's rights, no freedom of speech, not to mention being woken up every morning at 6am by some bloke wailing from the top of a tower. You can see why they're angry. Which therefore brings us to the question of why people with those freedoms living up at Harvard or in London Zone 1 are so uppity about it, if they're as well read on the situation as they claim to be. Personally, I think a lot of it's just a social jolly, now that Ukraine's become a bit passé to talk about. Although I do find it amusing to see people protesting about Israelis illegally taking over land when they themselves showed up in a rubber dinghy from France a few weeks ago. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.